you are of course most welcome. Today we're doing something completely different. Now for the last 30 odd episodes we've gone through a couple of um, Project Euler problems where we've talked about the best way to solve them just as a way of sharpening up the old programming skills. Today I want to use those skills to actually do something useful. So we're going to build ourselves a website. We're going to use a popular web development framework called Django which is based on Python. Now this tutorial is specifically aimed at people who use Windows 10 and 11. If you use a different operating system please stop the video and go and watch something else because I have not tested these instructions in your system. So I just want to be honest and I don't want to waste your time. So with that said there are five things you are going to need in order to complete this tutorial. One is um, a working knowledge of Python. So um, you don't have to be a genius, but you have to know what classes in, and inheritance are. So um, classes, objects, and inheritance, that sort of thing. Um, the second thing is Python itself. So go and download the latest version. And when you come to install it, make sure you click Add Python 3.9 to Path. That's going to make Python a lot easier to use from the command line. Okay. The third thing is uh, a command line which you should already have, uh, so PowerShell or Terminal or whatever it is. The fourth thing is a text editor. We will be working with Python, HTML and CSS today, so I would strongly recommend Visual Studio Code because it, it's advanced, uh, it can handle everything you throw at it and you can sort of um, categorize different files into different batches. So. If you're a total masochist, you can use Notepad, that's up to you. Um, and the fifth thing is a, an image editor, so paint or GIMP or something, because we will be working with thumbnails. So today we are going to build a travel blog. Now you've seen the sort of thing online, it's you know 19 million paragraphs about themselves and then one paragraph about the actual destination. Uh, there's affiliate links, there's comment sections, there's pop-ups, ads, uh, cookie notices, so we're not going to have any of that bollocks, we're just going to have a nice basic stripped down bare bones travel blog. So we need a folder for our site to live in, so create a folder in a convenient place and we're going to call it, we'll give it a sen sensible name. We'll call this one site. Uh, pretty much everything we do is going to be inside this folder. So the first step is to create the Python virtual environment and then um, install Django. So shift and right click and that should bring up the terminal. If you're in Windows 11, I believe it's just right click. Open in terminal. Right and we can now begin. So Python dash M then env. Now this creates the Py Python virtual environment in the current directory and it gives it a name env. You can call yours whatever you like but call it something sensible. Um, so hit enter and that will install the virtual environment. Now the reason we do this, uh, when you install Python onto your machine you might have installed all kinds of other things down the years like NumPy, SciPy, Pygame. We don't want any of that, we just want the absolute bare bones basic portable installation of Python purely for the purposes of creating this website. So that's done. It will take a little while because there are thousands of files so always just wait for it to finish. And now we need to activate the virtual environment. So env scripts activate there we go the Python virtual environment is now activated and we can tell because of this green text at the start of the line now we install Django pip install Django there we go this is going to take a little while because it is downloading Django from the internet and installing it so just sit tight make sure I am actually 
actually recording? Yes, I am. Good. There we go. So, Django works on the concept of projects and apps. So, uh, a Django project will consist of many apps. Um, so, for a blog, you might have an app for user login, an app for registration, an app for the um, comment section, and another app to handle the blog pages themselves. So today we're going to create a very basic project with just one app. So the project is the blog and the app is the travel section. In future episodes we're going to add other apps and more functionality to our website. But today we're just going to create a simple uh, website. So it's a project with one app, which is the travel section of the blog. So Django admin start project blog. Uh, let's see what that's done in our folder. So it's this one. So we have site blog and then inside that another folder called blog. So that's going to get very confusing so I will be changing the outer one in a few minutes. Can't do it yet but we will change it eventually. And this is manage.py. Now this is the most important file in the whole project. Do not delete it, do not edit it, do not move it, don't even look in its general direction, just leave it be. Unless you really know what you're doing, and if you're watching this tutorial, you probably don't, so leave it be. Okay, so let's cd into that blog folder we just created, and next we are going to set up the database. So Django is based on the model view template concept. I'll explain the view and the template later but the model is our link to the database and it allows us to create and edit database tables without knowing any database language so we don't have to learn SQL it's all done in Python but first we have to establish a database so Python manage.py migrate there we go that's all done and now we have finished installing Django and we can run the Django development server so if you ever want to preview your website if you want to use the admin console which we will create in a moment then you have to have the uh, development server running in order to run the development server you have to be in a working virtual environment so always make sure if you want to preview your website make sure You've got the green text at the beginning showing that the uh, virtual environment is indeed running. <clears throat> so let's run the server. Python manage.py run server. There we go. So we are given a web address. Let's go there and see what they've got. This is a, um, a, what I made earlier. So let's, uh, oh, that won't work. So we'll do this. And the install has successfully worked so that's good <clears throat> and now we crack on so come out of the development server with control C now it does say control break but not all keyboard tab break button so control C okay so now we're gonna change a few folders just to make things a bit easier so this blog folder that we're in now we want to change the name of this one. Remember, it's, it goes site blog blog. We don't want two folders with the same name, so we're going to change this one. So let's cd up one directory out of there, and I'll just do this manually because it's quicker. So this outer one I'm going to change to blog root. And we're also going to add two more folders. So we're going to go into blog root and then blog. And we're going to add two folders here. First is going to be templates, and that's going to hold the site template. I will explain that later. The other folder will hold the static files. So the static files are things like the CSS and the images. So let's get those up, and they're working good. 
So let's cd back into the folder we've just renamed. So cd blog root. And now we're going to set up the app. So um, a word of warning at this stage, Django makes absolutely no assumptions about the sort of website you want to create. And that's great because it gives you total autonomy, but it does mean there's a lot of setting up to do. So the rest of this tutorial, there's going to be a lot of go to this file, change this line, then go to this file and change this, go to this file, delete this. And the first few times you do it, it's going to look really faffy, messy, disorganized, illogical. Once you've done it a few times, the logic does start to click. And I remember the first few times I did this, I could not make head nor tail of it. And I wanted to throw my book at the wall, but um, just persevere with it. It will begin to make sense. So that's my word of warning. And now we uh, create the first app. So this is going to be the travel section of our blog. Of course, if you've got a different um, speciality or interest, you can follow these steps for anything really. So Django dash admin start app uh, travel. That will create a new folder. So let's see what we've got. So in the blog group, we've got blog. And this uh, blog is going to be the project folder and travel is the app folder. So remember that blog is the project folder and travel is the app folder. <coughs> so now I think it, this would be a good time to load all the files we're going to need into Visual Studio Code. So go into the app folder first. Let's get this maximized. So from this folder, we're going to load in admin, apps, sorry, admin, apps, models, and views. We're not going to do tests today. That's a, that's the thing we'll do later. So load those in. And from the project folder, we're going to want settings and URLs. So load those into Visual Studio Code and put them on a separate um, row so that it's easier to sort of see which is which. So on the top row, we've got the app files. On the bottom row, we've got the project files. So the first thing we have to do is uh, tell the project that the app exists. You would think that Django does this automatically, but no, it doesn't do anything automatically. You do everything. So. Um, the settings file here is going to be looking for a config class. So we have to point it to the config class. Now the config class is in apps.py and there you see it's travel config. So we have to point to that so it's travel.apps.travelconfig. Now we're going to go to the settings.py file, we're going to find the list of installed apps and we're going to add a new entry. So it's travel.apps.travelconfig and or take note of the capitalization. So save that and now the project knows that the app exists. Okay, <clears throat> so we can get rid of apps.py now because we're not going to use that one again. Now models, so as I said earlier, uh, the model is our link to the database and it allows us to create database tables without knowing any SQL. So that's what we're going to do now. Think, think of a, a, a page on the travel blog. What sort of data would you expect to see there? Well, there's going to be a thumbnail. There's going to be a title. Page always has a title. The page must have a permalink. And then there's going to be like the boring anecdote, which I'll call the body text. Now we're going to create for ourselves a database table with fields for all of these. Now Django gives you all kinds of fields for all kinds of data types. Today we're just going to use two. So we're going to have um, a short text and a long text. So 
let's create a database table. Let, let, let's create a model for our database table. So class travel page and we're going to import models.model. Okay, so we want a field for the title. So title is going to be models.char field. Now Django provides all kinds of field types for all kinds of data types. Uh, it's not very good with lists, but it's pretty good with everything else. So you got characters, uh, you got limited uh, text fields, unlimited text fields, images, files, uh, floating points, integers, all kinds of things. So go to the um, Django, if you're curious, go to the Django documentation, just see all the different kinds of fields you can use. Today we're just going to use char field and text field. <coughs> Excuse me a second. <coughs> so char fields are limited in length, so you have to set a max length, which in this case will be 30. Now permalink is going to be almost exactly the same, but there will be one notable difference. So let's copy that, put that there. Now, permalinks have got to be unique. You cannot have two pages with the same permalink, otherwise um, you're going to have chaos. So unique equals true. And that forces each permalink to be unique. Next, uh, the body text, which is going to be a text field. Now these do not need a max length because we're just going to whittle on as long as we like. Um, but it does need a label, so we'll call it body text. And then the image. Now there is an image field, but it's a massive faff to set up. And because this is like a beginner's thing, I'm just going to keep it to the absolute basics today. So this is going to be a models char field, and we're just going to have the file name for the image. Uh, max length equals, let's say 60. Okay. So, as I said, Django makes no assumptions about how you want your website laid out. Now, as part of this section, as well as setting up the um, database, we're also going to create an admin console that we can use to quickly and easily uh, manage the pages on our blog. Now if we leave it like this, when we come to the admin console and look at the list of pages, it'll say something like page object 1, page object 2, page object 3, page object 4, which is absolutely bob useless. So we're going to add a couple of lines of code here to force the admin console to show the title for each page. Then it's much easier to pick the one you want to edit, delete, whatever. So def dunder, str dunder self and return self.title there we are save that and that's our first model completed now we have to register the model with the site admin so we go to admin.py and the first thing we need to do is import the model that we just created so from dot models import travel page Now we're going to set up an admin class and it's going to tell the admin console exactly what we want to see um, in our list of pages. So um, class travel page admin. So when we come to see our list of pages, hang on, it's admin.model admin. When we come to see our list of pages, I would like them listed by title and permalink. I would like to be able to search by title and I would like them ordered in alphabetical order by the title. So I'm going to set those now. So list display equals, it's going to be a tuple, so title and permalink. Uh, search fields and ordering are both going to be just title so I can do this 
Python tuples are weird, you're always going to add the comma at the end. So there we are. And now we register the travel page class and the travel page admin class with the site admin. So admin.site.register travel page and travel page admin. Cool. Save that and we're done with that. So we've created the first model and we have created for ourselves a nice little admin console so that we can easily manage it. So going into the PowerShell we are in the correct folder so that's good and now we're going now we've made a change to the database we've added a new table so we need to um, uh, create oh god what are we doing um, anyway I'll show you what to do python manage.py make migrations so we're gonna collect all the changes we've made to the database with python manage.py make migrations travel hit enter and there we are and now we're going to execute those changes so python manage.py migrate and we're done so now we have created the admin console so we can easily edit create and delete pages now we need to create a super user who has the authority to do this. So python manage.py create super user. There we go. So uh, username, email address, anything you'd like. You'll never get an email, so it doesn't matter. Uh, the password, um, don't go crazy on the password. We're not going to deploy this, so. There we go. And now if we log in to the, um, if we launch the uh, development server, you will initially find that nothing has changed. So if we refresh the page, we're still going to see the rocket. But now if we go to admin, we will see a nice little login page. Log in and here is our model so we created this travel pages let's click on that and we see we can search by something there are no pages yet so there's no point searching anything so that's good so let's add some pages to our blog shall we so let's go to add okay and you will notice that this is the exact model we just created so let's compare uh, it's that one so there's title, permalink, body text, and image. So let's minimize that for the time being. So I'll show you how to create a couple of pages and then I want you to pause the video and go and create some of your own. So the first one is going to be a home page. This is a default page and you have to have this. So home permalink is just going to be the forward slash on its own. All the permalinks begin with a forward slash. And then body text has got to be HTML, so make sure you've got the tags working, otherwise you'll just get a big block of text. So welcome to my blog, that'll do. And now an image, so I'm going to set a default image for this page. It's going to be called topbanner.png, so choose yourself a nice default image. Now, in this example, I'm going to be giving each different page its own image because it's a travel blog. It's nice to have a picture of the place that we visited. Um, and you sh if you're going to do this, then you should make sure that each image is roughly the same size. Otherwise, it's going to get a bit awkward later on. So all of my images are 800 by 200 pixels. So as you create each page, go and find an image or create an image that's roughly the same size it's going to go across the top of the page as a sort of banner so um, create some images and I will also show you where the images are supposed to go you will remember that earlier we created a static folder that is where they will go so um, well, I'll create some pages first and then 
I'll, I'll keep a mental list of the images I want to use and then I'll move them all across to the static folder. Okay, so save and add another. And I've just remembered that OBS no longer has a pause button so I'm just going to work through these and you pause whenever you like. So, um, the train to Moscow. Uh, we'll call that Moscow and then the body text I've got here that one there copy into there it's HTML that's good and then we want Moscow.png save and add another so I've shown you how to do a couple pause the video go and make some pages for yourself and then come back um, That's Japan, and that is this one. Copy that, pop it there. Now we want uh, Japan.png for that one. Save and add another, and this will be the last one. This, this is Interrail. Interrail 2015, permalink into 2015, and then copy that and there we go so that's that one save so I've created four pages for the blog one home page and three blog pages so I'll save that and that will take me to a list of pages so this is what we defined in the admin class that was this one so we wanted to be able to search by title which we can uh, the pages are ordered by title and the list display shows the title and the permalink for each page so that's what we defined and that's what we've got so that is the model we've uh, created a few pages but we are a long way from being able to look at them so the next section is to set up the view now the view is the link between the model and the template so the view gets the data the raw data from the model from the database and then it passes it on to the template and then the template applies all the display logic to the data and passes it on to the, the, the user so this is the middle bit the view we're going to take the raw data from the um, the model and pass it onto the template. So in views.py we're gonna add an import. We're gonna import the um, the uh, travel page model that we created earlier. So from dot models import travel page. There we go. And now there is a lot of debate in the community, um, the, the, the Django community such as it is about should we use function based views or class based views I really don't give a shit either way so if you wanna have that debate in the comments you go ahead I don't care um, so def uh, travel view uh, this takes two arguments so the first is request and the second is page name now this is an absolute bitch to explain. Uh, let me think. How am I going to explain this? So the, the the browser sends a request through to us, to our site. It will send through a page name. The page name will not have the forward slash at the beginning. Remember when we set up the permalinks, they all had, they all had the forward slash at the beginning. When the browser sends through a page name, it won't have the forward slash. I don't know why Django does this, but if you try to um, locate the page in the database using page name, it won't find one because the per because it's got to have the forward slash. So now we add the forward. I'll just get on with it. Um, page name equals forward slash plus page name. It will become clearer once I've done a bit of coding. So. Um, done that now we collect a page from the blog so it's um, page object equals travel page dot objects dot get 
permalink equals page name. So what I'm trying to say is when we go to fetch a page from the database it's going to do it based on the permalink. Now the page name is almost exactly the permalink but it's missing the forward slash. In order to find the correct page we need that forward slash. That's why we add that to page name. I hope that makes sense. I really do. So now we've got the page object we're going to represent all the page data as a dictionary. So page data equals so we want the title the thumbnail and the body text so title is going to be um, page object dot title body text is going to be page object dot body text and there's going to be a fourth one as well actually um, um, what's it going to be oh yeah this is the thumbnail so oh, the image and that's page object dot image I think we called it image didn't we so go to models yes it was called image that's good so there we are and now we're going to add a fourth one which is the list of pages in the blog so we want to be able to navigate between all the pages so um, we'll add that now and then it's um, page list and that's going to be travel page dot objects dot all there we are and now we pass all that data back to the browser so return render and what are the arguments here? I should know this. Oh yeah, request. So it's three arguments. The first is request. The second is the template, which is going to be travel forward slash app template dot html. And then the third argument is the uh, page data. So page data. Right. So save all that, and that's our view done. Now we need to make sure that the site points to this file so there's a little bit more setting up to do so we're going to create a new file it's going to go in the app folder so make it a python file uh, save make sure it is in the app folder which in this case is travel so and it's going to be called urls.py Okay, now I'm going to have to refer to my notes here because I have completely forgotten uh, what we put here. I can sort of just about remember, but it's um, so it's up there somewhere. Uh, nope, a bit further up. Is it that one? Oh yes, it's this one. Good. Right. So from django.urls import path um, from the current directory import views just going to import the whole file okay so um, when the browser comes to our app we're going to give it two different places to go the first is going to be the default page so if the browser hasn't specified a page we're just going to send it to the default and then a different path if it has specified a page so URL patterns and this is going to be a list with two items first one is a path object and this will have four arguments so this is the one for the default page the first argument is the empty string second argument is views dot travel view the third argument is um, it's going to be a dictionary so we've got page name and the empty string and the fourth argument is name equals home that's the first one now the second one 
for when the uh, browser requests a specific page. Okay, str page name, and then this one takes three arguments. The second argument is views dot travel view, and then it's name oh, name equals index. There we go. So when the browser comes to our app, we can tell it where to go. So there's a little bit more setup to do. So in the project file, there is another file, sorry, in the project folder, there is another file also called urls.py. So we're just going to make some changes here as well. Let's get rid of all this gump. Okay, so on the second line where it says from django.urls import path, we're also going to import something called include. And then we're going to add another item to the list here. Path, and I think it's the empty string. Yes, it is. And then it's include. And we're going to point it to the URLs file in the travel folder. So travel.urls. There we are. Save that, and we are done. So a quick summary of what we've just done. Uh, when the browser uh, comes to our website, it's going to start looking for a resource in the project folder and in the urls.py file. We are going to tell it to go to the travel folder and look in the urls.py file there. The browser will arrive at the correct file and they'll go, all right, do you have the resource I'm looking for? And the urls.py file will say, no, you need to go to views and look in the travel view function. So then the browser will go, oh, OK, I'll look in the views file and look in the travel view function. Do you have the resource I'm looking for? And the travel view function will say, yes, here's the data you need. Here's the template you want. God bless you. And everybody is happy. So that's what we've done. So the views are now correctly set up. So the last bit is the template. So the template uh, takes the data from the view and then applies the display logic. Now your website will have two templates. There is a site template. Now this, the site template will apply to every page in every app. But each app will have its own template which inherits everything from the site template except for the bits it wants to change. And there's a clever way of telling the browser which bits we want to change. They're called template tags and you'll be seeing many of them in the next few minutes. First we're going to set up the site template and the accompanying CSS file. Now this is going to be a long and tedious section so in the description I have provided the site template file and the CSS file. You want to put the site template, your blog, so the project folder and it's in templates. It's the folder we created earlier so that is where the site template will go. The um, CSS file must go in the static folder. So remember that CSS in the static folder template in the templates folder. So we're going to create them from scratch and I will provide a timestamp in case you just want to skip through this bit and I wouldn't blame you because this is going to be laborious. So create a new file, save it. This is going to be the site template so we'll save it in um, blog templates. Call it site template.html save it there and there we go so the first thing we're going to do is load in a template tag now template tags are denoted by curly brackets and percent signs so everything we do goes in between them so load static and that's going to tell the browser to load the static files so that's your CSS and your images um, 
doc type HTML and HTML there and then head and then in there in the head we've got the uh, meta char set title and uh, the CSS file link so meta char set equals UTF 8 um, what else have we got title uh, default value would just be blog and then uh, link href equals now this is a bit tricky so we're gonna have a template tag here to load in the main.css file from the static folder so static main.css then close the template tag and we're done with that and then that's uh, rel equals style sheet and type equals text forward slash css that's the head and now the body okay so body so we're going to start with the wrapper which is just going to be a big div that holds everything there we go inside that we're going to have the image so we'll just have um, image source equals and again this is being loaded in from static folder so we'll do this static top banner dot png so this is going to be like the default um, file so of all the images that you've selected for your site choose a default image and put the file name there uh, width equals 800 height equals 200 go there's the image next thing I believe is the um, this can be the navigation bar so this is going to be sort of down the right hand side yeah the right hand side of the uh, web page so um, what do we want here aside that's right aside ID equals right side bar okay and inside that we're gonna have a nav ID equals nav and then inside that we're going to have an unordered list so ul and we'll just put some default list items to start with so li menu 1 li menu 2 and li menu 3 there we go there's the navigation bar there now with the section for the actual um, body text so section ID equals main and I'm just gonna have some default text again so h1 uh, potatoes I don't know doesn't matter really we're gonna change that and then the footer so footer ID equals footer uh, just put some text in there so copy right uh, and copy 2022 Andy Co web design there we go save that that's the site template done now the accompanying CSS file so file new file text file file save as we're going to save it in the static folder and we shall call it main.css right this is about 50 odd lines of code so uh, okay right header um, border try and get through this as quickly as possible border style and of course you can change the styling as much as you like none um, width 1000px uh, height 
auto. Next, the wrapper. Uh, margin top 0px. Oh. Margin left uh, auto margin right is auto uh, background color hashtag f f f f f f that's going to be white and then widths oh, widths uh, 800 px there we go uh, now the body so body uh, font family and just choose a font family um, I'm gonna go oh, what did I do font family and I'm gonna oh, try that again font family and I would like Georgia Times New Roman let's go for that one um, font size 0.9 em uh, text align is justify um, color is going to be quite a dark gray there we go and then background image now here I seem to have gone a bit extravagant so we're going to have a sort of gradient image in the background of the blog so um, linear gradient to bottom right and then we're gonna s declare a start color and a finish color so I have no idea what color this is DBD F09 that's yellow and it's fading to 0C0 B07 black oh that's gonna be ugly as hell I'm gonna change that um, so go for a nice purple I think so a very dark ish purple so maybe that that'd be nice yeah okay we'll do that it's gonna be way better right that's that for the body and now footer okay so text align center uh, font size 0.9 em no, 0.8 em actually um, margin top uh, 5px you can tell I don't have quite as much enthusiasm for CSS as I do for Python Padding top uh, 10px, uh, padding bottom uh, 10px, background color is going to be white, and then border top is going to be thin, solid. Hashtag B B B B B B. So that's a greyish, I think. Oh yeah, okay. And then clear both and color hashtag nine six nine six nine six. There we go. That's the footer. Now nav li. So nav li. Padding top uh, 10px, uh, padding bottom uh, 10px, font font size is 1em, list style type is going to be disk. Oop. Uh, color color 
is going to be uh, 2D, 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 nice grey. And oh, right next, uh, left, 0px. Uh, list style position uh, outside and margin left is going to be minus 10px. There we go. So that's footer, that's that one, and then the next one is nav lia, so hashtag nav lia, so this is the hyperlinks within the um, navigation bar. Text decoration none. That seems a bit pointless. I am working from notes of course. Um, so right side bar. I'll give that a bit of space. There we go. Right side bar. Uh, that's going to be width um, 180 px. Height uh, 350 px and then float right. So this um, sidebar with all the navigation links should appear on the right side of the page. Okay, so then main, and finally we're at the last bit main width 800 px, um, float left, margin left, uh, 20px, uh, margin right, uh, 10px, and finally padding right, 10px, and we're done with the CSS file, thank god for that, that was tedious. So, if you're just joining us, we have finished uh, writing the uh, HTML and CSS files from scratch. They are now saved up. That's the site template. Now as I said the app template inherits everything from the site template except for the bits we want to change. So the app template will denote the bits we want to change. Sorry, the site template will denote the bits we want to change and the app template will describe how we want them to change. So we need to create an app template. Now this, I do not understand the steps. We're going to go into the app folder and I do not understand why we do it like this. So create a folder in here called templates. There we are. And that's where the app template lives, right? No. We create another folder inside which is going to have the same name as your app. In this case it's travel. And that is where the app template is going to live. I have no clue why we do it like that. But that's the way it's done. So that's where the app template is going to live. File, new file, text file. And we're going to save it in that folder as an HTML file. So. Uh, HTML, uh, make sure we're in the correct folder, travel, templates, travel, and that's where app template will go. Save that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is inherit the site template. So extends site template dot HTML. So we'll save that and we'll just see what we've got so far. So go to the, com uh, the command line. It's not showing any errors, so I'm going to hit refresh. I'm going to go to the home page, hit refresh and see what we've got. Template does not exist.
oh damn it I know what's wrong right I haven't told the program where the site template folder is so we created the folder but we didn't tell the settings file where the site template actually lives so oh my god that's embarrassing right so go to the settings file and the first thing is import OS and we've got that so now we scroll down to templates and there's an empty list here so it's dears is the um, key to this dictionary and the empty list is there so it's os.path.join um, base underscore dear and then it's blog forward slash templates that's I am such a dunce right so the next thing is to tell it where the static folder is so scroll down to where it says static URL we're going to add another constant static files um, dears this is going to be a list with a single item os.path.join base underscore dear and blog forward slash static I bet some of you were absolutely screaming that at your computer oh my god that's embarrassing okay so um, that should now work please god yes there we are so we now have sort of a working blog uh, but there's a lot I don't like about it so go to the Moscow page yeah so um, we have the HTML and the layout and the CSS all working so now we're going to add piece by piece all the bits of data so as I said the site template um, shows the general layout for every page in our blog and the app template inherits everything from the site template except for the bits we want to change so first thing I would like to change is the body text so we're going to go to the default body text here this potatoes thing and we're going to wrap it in uh, template tags so block now so it's going to be block and then give your block a name so block body text there and then block body text uh, sorry that's going to be end block body text I'm making a hash of this it is nearly uh, what oh it's gone half one in the morning so that's my only excuse save that so we've wrapped the text we want to change in template tags now we go to app template and we use exactly the same tags to tell it what we want it to change to so uh, block content and now Visual Studio Code is an absolute pain in the ass for these things it just gets rid of the curly brackets for some reason so we got block content now we have to do an auto escape so auto escape off if we don't do this it won't render the HTML properly it'll just give you the raw text so now we put in the bit of data that we want to see on the page so go to the view and we want the body text so that goes in there and then we turn off auto escape so we turn auto escape back on and auto escape and then we do the end block content save that go to your page and refresh it and we should have the text for the Moscow page no that hasn't worked I didn't save something oh I called it content it's actually called body text oh. body text and down there body text I'm such a dunce right try that again 
and this time it's working so we got the text for the page if we go to Japan we'll have the text for the Japan page we still don't have the title or the nav bar so we'll change that now so go to the site template and we want to change the title so in here we're going to put a template tag so block title and then at the other end end block title okay save that go to your app template use the same template tags so block title and end block title then in the middle we're going to put the bit of data we want to see on the screen which is title save that have a look at the page refresh and we should have the correct title for each one so now we'll go into rail just to make sure yeah that's all there good right now the image so we want to update the image for each page so go to site template and we're going to do it here so image src now this is a bit tricky what we're going to do here is we're going to get rid of the text in here so it's just a static empty string then we're going to put some template tags so it's um, block image close that one then we put the name of the default image so top banner dot png and then end block image there we go save that go to the app template and block image and then in their image and end block image now I don't think I actually moved the image files into the static folder so I better do that now um, let's go that's static and that's block root so let's move that to desktop site static files I've got them all saved here so it's um, it's gonna be um, that one that one that one and that one copy them paste them there they are so that's all saved save that go to the page and hopefully yes so now each page has its own image yes so now it's just a navigation bar so go to the site template this one's going to involve a loop which you can do with template tags so start underneath UL and finish above the closing UL so we'll start here and it's um, block nav and end block nav end block nav save that and now we're going to go to app template and block nav and we're going to do a list here so um, for page in what did we call it page list page list close that one um, then we're going to do um, a oh no it's going to be li then a ref equals we're going to have a template tag in here so that's um, page dot permalink and then we're going to have so that's that goes there and then we have the page name here so page dot title that goes there and then down here we have end for all one word and then 
end block nav. Right, save that. Moment of truth. Refresh this, and there are the links to all the other pages. And now we have a functioning travel blog. So I'm just going to add one more page just to make sure it's all working. And then we are done for today. So title, uh, Interrail 2016, Permalink Int 2016, body text is this one. And the image I will have Belgrade, save that move the relevant file into the static folder okay go back to the home page and hopefully that has done it yep there's the new page click on that and that is working so that is how to create a very basic blog website using Django and in the next episode we'll be adding bits and pieces to it so thank you very much for watching